Hello, I'm Nels Klein, and you are watching Portable Universe. There's a portable universe inside your dome. Always take it with you when you leave home. Welcome back to Portable Universe. I'm your host, David Witham, and after a long hiatus, we're back with more art and creativity from down the block and around the world for your enjoyment. We've got three items for your perusal today, a documentary and a couple of music things, and we're going to start with a documentary, it's something uh, my creative partner Matt Cohen and I started back in 2005 when the Movie Land Wax Museum in Buena Park closed its doors for the final time. Matt dragged me down there early one morning. I had no interest in checking this place out, but once I got there, I was fascinated and shot probably 200 pictures and was inspired enough to come back on closing day, Halloween 2005, to talk to some of the patrons and some of the people that ran the place. and. Then we went to the Museum of Television and Radio and actually did some research on the joint. And then the piece sat in the can for 16 years until the pandemic. And that was the perfect excuse to finally finish it and bring it to fruition. And you'll be the first to see it. This is the premiere of Wax and Wayne, The Last Days of Movie Land. And today is our very last day here at Movieland Wax Museum. Uh, today is a very sad day. I feel like I'm losing a part of a family. I've been here for 27 years. There are several people that's worked there over 10 years or more. So this is a very emotional day for a lot of us. And uh, it'll be a very sad day today when we close the door at 6 o'clock. Movieland Wax Museum. Built in Buena Park, California, but with its heart firmly in Hollywood. It opened in 1962, before Netflix, before DVD, before VCR, when cinema was king and movie stars were its royal court. I think people like to visit Movieland Wax Museum because it's probably as close as you're ever going to get to your favorite star. So this is where you can see the star and um, uh, see your favorite movie, and when you walk into movie land, it's like walking into your favorite movie set. Well, I can tell you one thing. I was the first girl hired here in 1962, and I, I knew Gloria Swanson real well. I was in all the parades. And I uh, was in all the publicity pictures for Mr. Parkinson, but he's gone now. High energy entrepreneur Alan H. Parkinson 
inspired by a 1958 trip to Madame Tussauds Wax Museum in London, decided to make good on his vision of immortalizing the stars of Hollywood in wax, that pliable substance so eerily similar to human flesh. Who's your favorite? Elizabeth Taylor. She's the best, most lifelike. I first came to the Movie Land Wax Museum when I was a little girl. My uh, last visit was about 12 years ago, and then we came today because my son, JD, had never been here before, and I wanted him to come and see the magic inside the Wax Museum. I like Shirley Temple. That's good. I like the Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris? What else? The most popular star at Movie Land Wax Museum is Lucille Ball. Also popular is John Wayne, Marilyn Monroe, and we have a Star Trek scene that's very popular with the young people. My favorite star that visited Movie Land is Tom Selleck. He was very generous. There was thousands of people in line, and he greeted every one of them and had his picture taken with everyone. He was very generous with his time. Even the younger generation still, like Marilyn Monroe, uh, John Wayne, Lucille Ball, those people will always be popular forever. But even the older generation, they like J-Lo um, and um, Jack Nicholson. So I think it's an overall appeal with everybody. They enjoy seeing the stars here. What was your favorite? Um, I like Marilyn Monroe. Kind of looks like her. And Christina. The last time uh, I was here was a long time ago, but I think back then, uh, I, I mean, I know, I know Arnold Schwarzenegger was here. Uh, have you been to the museum before? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. You have been to the museum before. How many times have you been? Uh, I grew up in Buena Park, so I'm going to say, like, 30 times. <laughs> the biggest thing is uh, the horror section. That whole horror section of the town. It's a big, we're a big fan. <laughs> Perfect night for it, too. What better way to spend Halloween? You know? right. Perfect indeed. Wax, sound, and lighting utilized to perfection to create a brilliant, macabre shrine to the golden age of Hollywood horror. This is very upsetting, so I had to, had to definitely come ditched out of work, which now I'll probably get fired uh, if anybody sees this, but uh, yeah, I had to definitely Don't worry. Come. <laughs> and it's the best one around, too. I've gone to the one in Las Vegas and then the one in L.A., and I think this one's the best one. What is a star? Who is a star? As the years went by, the Movie Land Wax Museum sought to define and capture the stars from an expanded palette of high-profile mediums. Television, music, politics. But eventually, the excitement of seeing a static wax effigy started to wear off. Stars, once accessible only in cinema palaces, were becoming more and more commonplace on videotape, television shows, and movie reruns. And that newfangled star domain, the internet, Businesses at nearby amusement parks was booming, and the new generation of moviegoers was restless for livelier and more kinetic entertainment. Gone were the days of glitzy red carpet wax figure unveilings and throngs of eager spectators. The stars in the Movie Land Wax Museum were beginning to spend long, lonely afternoons alone. I'll tell you, I really was sad when I came here because then, to me, it was really beautiful. Uh, right. Now it isn't like it was. We had gold rings and earrings and we were dressed to the teeth. Finally, in 2005, the Movie Land Wax Museum powers that be decided that the competition from the expanding media world and the local amusement parks were too much. The allure of the celebrity wax figure in Buena Park was about to melt away forever. The wax figure 
pictures are moving to the Wax Museum at Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco, and uh, the rest will be sold off or auctioned off. We've all worked very hard. Thousands of people have come in and visit during the past 14 days. So we're all exhausted, but we're all getting tomorrow off, and the company's paying for it. What years did y'all work here? I was here 69. So is it a bittersweet day today? Yes. Yeah, it's like a funeral. This is our first job. Our first job. Kind of set us up. And so, after sparking the imaginations of countless thousands of movie fans for decades, the stars in the Movieland Wax Museum greeted guests one last time on Halloween 2005, with the two words seen so frequently on the movie screen during the heyday of Hollywood, the end. Next up, we have some music from the Christian Jacob Trio in their most recent recording entitled The Originals. Christian invited us into the studio to document the making of this record, so we're happy to share this inside look with you. You may have seen Christian on the show before with the Tierney Sutton group along with the bassist Trey Henry and Ray Brinker on the drums. And this trio has played together for many, many years, over a quarter of a century. And they create really great stuff. Christian writes great music, hence the title, The Originals, and they really ran with the concept of The Originals, going as far as to create a backstory that encompassed all the songs and created superheroes, and Trey's son cr contributed graphic art to this story, and it's really something just beyond a record album. Uh, Christian will explain it a lot better than I ever could. So let's give a look at the Christian Jacob Trio and their recording, The Originals. Well, this is the first time that I do a project with 100% original music. It's something I always wanted to do. And most of the compositions are fairly new. I wrote them for this project, so I'm very excited about it. You have Trey Henry on bass and Ray Brinker on drums and we've been together forever. The 
we always have been together, helping out each other, giving ideas within the trio. I really realize uh, how grateful I am for this trio. <laughs> Suddenly I thought, wow, if I could put a string section or something, not like a symphonic extravaganza, something that would really support the, the trio. This is a, a trio project, so having some strings to give some depth to it. So this started as a trio project. Then I wrote some strings and, and I was really happy. There was a lot of atmosphere to it. And it practically told a story. So then I wrote a story, you know, a story that would connect all the tracks together and, and let the music do the rest. great to have a story instead of liner notes a story that links uh, one song to the other and suddenly uh, you know my wife and I worked on that like <laughs> really hard and we ended up with a fantastic story you know about the trio of course a trio of friends who have kind of superhuman abilities uh, they are called the originals of course in this story, you got, you know, you got some characters, you got the shapeshifter, uh, a little girl. I, I, I love it. So that creativity and uh, that friendship we have together, I guess, helped also for the story. I really feel that every track has something special uh, to give away. So check it out. I hope you enjoy what we've done. Finally, we've got a video from Brian Woodbury. Brian's a man who has not sat still during the pandemic. He's currently at work on a four CD magnum opus called Anthems and Antithets. And this song is from volume three, Antipathy and Ideology. 
and it's called if it ain't broke break it and it has to do with the notion of disruption and disruptors and it's sung from the point of view of a disruptor a man who bends the rules to suit his whim and we've certainly just lived through an era of that haven't we um, Brian sings it from this guy's point of view which is certainly not his own point of view but he gives a very uh, ironic and, and pointed look at this notion of disruption. And he always comes up with great videos using just an iPhone, a green screen, and a couple of lights. I'm always so impressed by what he does with that stuff. You can learn more about Brian in this, in this undertaking, this four CD undertaking at his website, brianwoodbury.com. He's got a place on Facebook. He's all over the place. And uh, I contributed some piano and organ to this song that he wrote with Alfred Johnson. If it ain't broke, break it. You build your smug stability keep from feeling ill at ease you carefully construct your world just wait till i have fucked your world i never met a paradigm i couldn't disrupt i'm gonna make some changes and they might be abrupt i'm a man on a mission of creative demolition to get with the future That's it for this episode of Portable Universe. Tune in next time for more art and culture from down the block and around the world. 
Till then, check us out on the internet, portableuniverse.tv. We have a YouTube page curated by Dave Baby 9000 and a Facebook presence as well. You'll see the addresses on the end credits. And always remember this, there's a portable universe inside your dome. Always take it with you when you leave home. And we'll see you next time. Constantly turn your television on. Portable Universe is on. I don't know what day it's actually on. It's been on for 117 years. And you should be watching it every single day. And it's probably going to be on somewhere in a Portable Universe.